Hello everyone, my name is José Mauricio Mota and I'm a geomedical oncologist at the University of Sao Paulo and Oncologia Dor in Sao Paulo. On behalf of Onconews, I would like to thank Dr. Jason Stathew, who is here with us today to discuss the upcoming 2021 GeoASCO. Dr. F. Stathew is the chair-elect for the 2021 GeoASCO program. He's a professor of radiation oncology at Harvard Medical School. Uh, he's also the director of GEO division in the Department of Radiation Oncology and the clinical co-director of the Claire John Bertucci uh, uh, Center for GEO Cancers at MGH. So Dr. F. Stathew, again, thank you uh, very much for so kindly accepting this invitation. I'd like to start by uh, asking you to comment a little bit on this new uh, virtual format and how the program committee uh, works to improve the whole media experience. Uh, and also, uh, why do you think people should attend this uh, GU uh, ESCO? Uh, thank you very much, Jose. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, yeah, this is, it's an exciting meeting. And I think the key here is that it's multidisciplinary. Okay, it is a multidisciplinary meeting at its heart. It has world renowned faculty, diverse speakers presenting global perspectives and, and, and talking about practice changing research. So that, that's why you should go. Um, uh, there's gonna be new innovative findings in the study, diagnosis and treatment of GU cancers. Um, certainly, the whole uh, world has changed to virtual meetings, and uh, the GU Cancer Symposium uh, and, and ASCO needed to do the same thing. Uh, and I think that that has come with, uh, you know, many trials and tribulations for, for, for all of us. Uh, but I think that the staff of ASCO and all of the, the committee members uh, involved did a phenomenal job in choosing speakers and formats uh, that would be conducive to a virtual meeting in the virtual world. Um, it really is an engaging and interactive program uh, with, with evidence-based education at its core, and it is offering a virtual forum for discussing sort of novel ideas, multimodality therapy, and, and ultimately patient-centered care. Uh, and very importantly, um, you know, one of the big problems with virtual meetings is you lose that ability to run each into each other in the hallway and the corridors and have those little chats. As best as possible, um, uh, the GU Cancer Symposium is, uh, is, has embedded virtual networking opportunities and sort of chances uh, to collaborate with the global oncology meeting. And so there are sessions, virtual net networking sessions for early career, mid-professional, uh, um, uh, uh, attendees to meet with world-renowned experts and, and virtually uh, network with those professionals, industry leaders. I think this is great news. Um, uh, next, I'd like to uh, ask you, more, going more specifically on the sessions, uh, what are your uh, highlights for, for this uh, conference and what sessions do you think that people can't miss? Yeah. It's a, it's a diverse lineup um, that covers yeah. the, the whole spectrum of GU cancers. And so different things are gonna appeal to different people. Um, I'll give you a little flavor of some of the sessions and the program highlights. Um, and, 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 and I'm sure many of these will be of interest to, to most of us. Uh, we do have a keynote lecture from a Nobel laureate, Dr. Bill Kalin, who will be talking about the Von uh, Hippel-Lindau tumor suppressor protein the Rosetta Stone for Kidney Cancer Pathogenesis and Treatment. Uh, that should be uh, of interest to many, especially those um, who are interested in, in kidney cancer. We're also gonna have a panel discussion uh, that features FDA representatives uh, from the Food and Drug Administration talking about the history of drug development in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer that I think is gonna be fascinating. Uh, to urologists and those that are interested in bladder cancer 
and drug development in the, uh, within that space. Um, there, there's gonna be multidisciplinary panels and case-based discussions. Those are always a crowd pleaser um, uh, uh, at the meeting. There's gonna be, as I refer to, live networking sessions for the trainees and early career uh, folks. Uh, and those are gonna be live. There's gonna be meet the ex expert networking set sessions. And those are gonna be live as well. And we really, again, have world renowned faculty participating in that. Um, there are oral abstract and rapid abstract sessions um, uh, that are, that are gonna be uh, uh, highlighting sort of novel and, and clinically relevant research. And there's gonna be uh, discussants putting those findings into context, and those are often uh, very popular as well. And there's gonna be poster highlight sessions, talking, you know, showcasing the poster research uh, in prostate, urothelial and renal cancers. And, and it, that's gonna sort of serve as a virtual poster walk uh, as, as well. And of course, uh, there's the popular best of journals sessions in prostate, urothelial and renal cancer, which will put into context the most clinically relevant journal articles uh, from, from uh, uh, the last year. So hopefully that gives you a flavor, lots of content, lots of things. Um, there's gotta be something of interest for everyone. Yeah, great. Uh, can, you, can you comment a little bit uh, further on the virtual uh, poster walk? And I think most people would be interested in attending uh, this uh, virtual walks. Uh, but uh, sometimes people can uh, be confused by how it works. Can you comment a little bit on this? Yeah, th there's going to be daily concurrent poster highlight sessions discussing post poster um, uh, research on, on different topics organized by prostate cancer, localized and advanced uh, urothelial carcinoma. There's going to be translational studies and clinical trials or renal cell cancer with clinical trial updates and gene signatures as kind of broad themes for those sessions. Um, and and, uh, and it, there's gonna be the ability to participate in those highlight sessions that will kind of serve, you know, as the, they, they run through different um, posters as, as a poster walk. Right, right. But there's no need for a prior registration for a specific walk. It's, Space space is limited, All right. <laughs> as in as in as it is also in, in when the meetings are in person. Space is limited in the poster highlights and the networking sessions, and are available on a first come first serve basis. So oh, again, right. another reason: register, sign up, and 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 get into those sessions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you, I know it's a, it's a hard one. Uh, but uh, if you had to, to uh, pick up maybe uh, four or five major uh, abstracts that you think that will probably uh, change the practice on the next Monday for the general oncologist, which uh, works you would, uh, you would uh, recommend uh, for people to, to see with a better look? Yeah, um, the... You know, I, I can give you a flavor of some of the, the abstracts that are being presented um, and, and certainly uh, stay tuned to the daily emails and the daily news coverage uh, that will happen as well that will highlight um, kind of the top abstracts of, of, the, of, uh, of the meeting. But, you know, one, one, one example, um, and, uh, you know, of an abstract that's been promoted with some press release are, are the first results of the phase three checkmate 274 trial of adjuvant nivolumab versus placebo in patients who underwent radical surgery for high risk muscle invasive urothelial carcinoma. Okay, and those are gonna be the first results from that phase three trial. That's going to be uh, certainly of interest. There are gonna be other, um, you know, uh, lots of clinical trials, of course, uh, phase two, phase three, um, but there's also gonna be other interesting abstracts that I think really comment on how the landscape of GU cancers has, has changed. For example, uh, there'll be a, a, an abstract on the association of reductions in PSA screening across states in the United States with increased metastatic prostate cancer in the United States. That, that's a phenomenon that we've seen where PSA screening had gone down and suddenly in our clinic, we're seeing much more high-risk advanced metastatic disease. 
And that's changed a lot of our priorities and our management strategies as well. And it's, it's um, informed, uh, you know, um, uh, again, where resources need to be put. Um, there, there will be an abstract on stereotactic radiotherapy and pembrolizumab for oligometastatic renal tumors, uh, the report study, um, uh, the report study. So, you know, there, there's really a little bit, uh, that's just a flavor of something in, in urothelial cancer and renal cancer and in prostate cancer. There's lots more. Uh, I could list many other abstracts. So stay tuned to the, the coverage that will be coming from the meeting and even better, attend the meeting and listen to the abstracts being reported primarily. Great. So Dr. Seth, you, uh, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate your thoughts. Uh, I believe that our audience uh, will appreciate it as well. Uh, I'd like now to finish this uh, interview wishing a great conference for, for you and for our audience and inviting everyone to take a good look at Onconews uh, FID covering uh, this uh, 2021 GEOASCO. So thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me and, and look forward to seeing you at the meeting. Take care.